Osteosarcoma. Osteosarcoma is a malignant neoplasm of bone in which osteoid is produced directly by a malignant stroma as opposed to adjacent reactive bone formation. Osteosarcoma is the most common primary bone malignancy of childhood and adolescence, with approximately 400 new cases a year in the U.S. Some gene mutations are listed. Etiologic factors include age, gender, ethnicity, height and growth, genetic and familial factors, and pre-existing bone abnormalities, as well as exposure situation. Some demographics include a slight predilection for males, occurring most in the second decade of life, with a mean age of about 35 years. Table 1 shows demographics for osteosarcoma, specifically for the head and neck area. Osteosarcoma is most often found in the mandible, occurring about twice as often as that being in the maxilla. Common sites in the mandible include the body at 60%, as well as the symphysis, mandibular angle, ascending ramus, and the TMJ. Some symptoms of osteosarcoma include swelling, pain, paresthesia, periodontal ligament invasion, as well as tooth mobility and or displacement. As far as metastases, the lungs and skeletal system are the favored sites. When spread to the long bones, the distal femur and proximal tibia are the most prominent sites, with patients over 25 years of age showing greater variability. Here are some clinical findings. Figure 1 of a picture showing extraoral swelling at the angle of the mandible, as well as the photo on the right showing a gross specimen of a resected mandible. Radiographic findings. Findings can be radiolucent, radioopaque, or mixed. They often have poorly defined borders. Widening of the PDL space is seen. Osteosarcoma is often very well known for having a typical sunburst pattern in at least a quarter of the cases with spiky root resorption seen. In lesions of the long bones, MRIs are best to see the lesion into soft tissue, neurovascular structures, and invasion into joints. CTs can be used for examining bone irregularities, fractures, mineralization patterns, and neurovascular involvement. PET scans can be helpful for determining metastatic lesions. Here are a couple of radiographs showing some typical features often seen for osteosarcoma. In the bottom you can see the typical sunburst pattern affecting the patient's shoulder. Here's another radiograph of an axial CT scan of the mandible showing poorly defined destructive osteosarcoma of the mandible. Here, this lesion extends into the soft tissues and has a cloud-like pattern of mineralization. Osteosarcoma can be split into three different levels, including low-grade tumors, intermediate-grade tumors, and high-grade tumors. Histologically, there is an osteoblastic osteosarcoma, a chondroblastic osteosarcoma, and a fibroblastic osteosarcoma. Respectively, these can be seen to the left, A, B, and C, via hematoxylin and eosin staining. As far as a differential diagnosis, one of them is scleroderma. Moth-eaten radiolucencies are common to other malignancies, chronic osteomyelitis, and several benign neoplasms. Metastatic carcinoma, particularly prostatic, may only be differentiated by biopsy. Often misdiagnosed as a giant cell tumor, an aneurysmal bone cyst, and Ewing sarcoma. Some options for treatment of osteosarcoma include complete surgical excision, chemotherapy, radiation therapy, with unfavorable outcomes, biological response modifiers, anti-angiogenesis factors, and growth receptor modulation. Patients with localized disease can expect a five-year survival rate as high as 60 to 78 percent, but drops drastically to 20 to 30 percent for those with metastatic disease. Other indications for prognosis are the stage at which osteosarcoma was diagnosed, 
tumor size, increased alkaline phosphatase levels, where it occurs in the body, as well as secondary tumors. Here is a list of our references. And here are our image citations.